In the second part of this lecture, we try to obtain the potential resulting from an infinite linear charge. We have seen before that the field resulting from an infinite linear charge along the z-axis is given by this expression here, rho L over 2 by rho in the rho direction. So if you draw your, uh, your infinite charge, it looks something like this, and the field is always pointing in the rho direction, in the rho direction here, and is decaying as 1 over rho. And if you want to obtain the, the, the voltage difference between two points A and B, VAB, as we agreed, it is VB minus VA. It is equal to the work done against the electric field in, point, in, in moving a point charge from point A to point B. So uh, because it's against the electric field, I'm putting here this negative sign here outside the integral. So um, you put here the negative sign, you integrate from rho A to rho B, because it, everything depends on rho. This is the, so rho A, uh, may I should clarify, rho A is the normal distance from the point A to the wire, to the uh, charge that you have. Rho B is the normal distance from uh, the, point, the point B to your charge. This is here is the value of E, and uh, if you want to integrate along from, uh, from this uh, radius to this radius from the, from the z-axis, you can take dl as d rho a rho. Of course, dl has three components, as we have seen before, in cylindrical coordinates. It's d rho a rho, rho d phi a phi plus dz az. Because the electric field has only a rho component, we only keep the, the, the d rho a rho part in the dl. a rho dot a rho will give you 1. The integral of 1 over rho will give you ln rho. You put the upper limit minus the lower limit, you obtain this expression here. Now, we, can, we are now able to obtain the voltage difference between two points A and B. So this is VB minus VA is given by this expression here. Can we choose a B or A to be in rho B or rho A to be infinity as we did for a point charge? No, we can't do that because if you put infinity here or here, you try to make the point of infinity to have a zero voltage, this will give you an infinite an infinite uh, potential difference. So we can do that. Um, the, the most, uh, the most uh, acceptable uh, approach here, uh, and again, you can use any other point, you select Ruby equal to 1 as your reference. So the, uh, the, the, the reference voltage that we have is at rho b equal to 1, and then you select the voltage at this rho to be equal to 0. So now if we do that, VAB is equal to VB minus VA, but VB is 0, so this will give you minus VA. This is rho L over 2 by epsilon then rho A. And then I can simply multiply both sides by the negative sign and take this one to uh, move the negative sign inside the land to invert uh, the rho A to 1 over rho A. So now we know something very interesting, that the potential difference between any point uh, with, a dist with a radius rho A from the charge, uh, between that, that point and the point rho equal to 1, is given by this expression. Okay, so even though we write it as an absolute voltage, it's not really an absolute, because we took already a point as a reference point and we gave it a zero potential. The last part of this lecture will address the relationship between E and V, the electric, uh, electric field and the scalar potential. We have seen from previous derivations that uh, VAB, the difference between two points, is equal to negative the work, uh, negative the work done per charge in moving uh, um, uh, negative, it's actually the work done against the electric field per charge in moving this unit charge from point A to point B. So here we can have a contour C1 in moving from A to B, and we can have a contour, another contour in moving from A to B. The answer will not depend on the, on the contour of integration that we are using. Actually, you can use any contour and you get the same answer, because as we have seen, the result does not depend on the contour, but rather on the position of the end points. So it depends on the con con position of A and position of B. So I could, do, I could have done this integral here, or could have done it from, uh, from A to B over the contour C2. Now, this means that I can reverse the order of C2. I can sum these two together, and this will give me a closed contour, and the closed contour is equal to zero. So this is simply saying that the voltage difference between a point and itself is equal to zero. And this is uh, what we explained earlier, that the electrostatic field is a conservative field. 
if you do a closed contour integral of it, you get zero. The voltage difference between a point and itself is zero. Now we know from Stock theorem that uh, a closed service integral, a closed line integral like this one, can be converted to a, a service integral over any service enclosed by that contour. And there are actually infinite number of services enclosed by any closed contour. If you just pick one of them, this will give me this expression equal to zero, the curl of E dot DS is equal to zero. And because this holds for any S and for any contour C, this means that the curl of E must be zero at every point. So this is telling us that the electric field is irrotational, as we called before. It, it does not have a curl. It's, it's, a, it is, it's a rotational field. And we, I explained to you before in, the, in one of the lectures that when a vector has a zero curl, it can be written as the gradient of a scalar function. Because the curl of the gradient of a scalar function is always zero. So when curl is equal to zero, this means that we can write E as equal to minus gradient V, where Z, V is the really scalar potential that we, uh, we talked about. So this is one approach to show that E is equal to minus gradient V, and I will show you now a second approach for getting this derivation. The second approach is simply to, uh, to try to get the differential potential difference over a differential length. We know that the work done over a differential length Again, is the electric field is minus q e dot dl. But if you divide by uh, the work by q, you get the voltage difference um, along this line with minus e dot dl. We know that in Cartesian coordinates, dl here is equal to dx ax plus dy ay plus dz az. So we dot product e with the product the corresponding components here between e and dl to get this expansion. Anyone who worked with, uh, with first order theory expansion, we know that if you uh, move from one point in the parameter space to another point in the parameter space, and uh, you made a perturbation here, uh, dx, uh, dy, and dz, then Taylor expansion will tell you that the voltage difference, voltage change from V1 to V2 here, and the voltage difference between them is dV. And this dV from Taylor expansion is given by this expression here dv is partial v partial x dx plus partial v partial y dy plus partial v partial z dz. So if you equate this exp expansion to the expression that we got from the definition of the voltage, you will see that ex would be equal to minus v partial v partial x, ey minus partial v partial y, ez is equal to minus partial v partial z. I have a typo here. Of course, this one here should be z, correct? because we are getting different derivatives. So this is telling us that the electric field is indeed equal to the minus the gradient of the uh, scalar potential. So if you know the scalar potential, this gives us the electric field by applying the gradient operator. And the same thing applies for other dimensions as well, not only the Cartesian, it applies to cylindric and spherical, but we have to use the expression for the gradient in these coordinates. Start here by showing you a couple of examples would like to find the potential difference between two points of uh, with rho equal to one meter and rho equal to half a meter from an infinite line charge with a charge density of rho L one microcoulomb per meter. So we have an infinite charge, it's along the z-axis, say, and uh, we have two points who, ha who have normal distance from this charge of one meter and 0.5 meter, and would like to calculate the potential difference between these two points. As we agreed, for uh, for infinite linear charges, you cannot take the reference as infinity. At a reference at, at infinity will give you an infinite potential. What will what will do here? I will take the reference at one, as I explained in the theory. So I will say that at rho equal to one, so uh, any point here at a distance of one, this if this is one from the wire, this one here will have a zero potential. So here we have zero volts. So now we define our ground as we do in uh, in circuit analysis. And using the expression we derived earlier, we can say that the voltage of VA relative to rho equal to 1 is given by this expression. So this is the first point, which has a dimension rho A half a meter from the, from the wire. And then the second point here, it's, its potential relative to the rho equal to 1 cylinder is given by this expression. We derived this expression just in one slide or two slides away. Um, now... We, of course, and, and this is, and rho B here is a normal distance from the point B 
to the wire and the phi does not make any difference so b can anywhere around the wire as long as it has a normal distance of one the same applies to a as well so now if we say we want to get va minus vb we subtract this one this term minus this one you end up with this expression uh, when you subtract two len uh, you end up with one divided by the other so this will give you len rho b over rho a rho b is equal to one meter rho a is equal to half a meter so the ratio will be len two Rho L is given 1 microcoulomb per meter, and we know epsilon. So we can calculate the, the difference in potential between these two points. So if you substitute here, this is 1 microcoulomb per meter, 2 by epsilon naught, 1 over 36 by 10 to the minus 9, multiplied by length 2, which is 0.6931. Uh, this one will cancel with this one to give you 18, and this one will cancel with this one to give you 10 to the power 3. So you get here 18 multiplied by 10 to the power 3 by 0.6931. So you get that VA is higher than VB by 12.476 kilovolt, which, which makes quite sense because if if I draw if I draw a top view of the wire of the wire so the of this charge the charge will look like a point. This is a, this is a constant. Uh, this is RE here, and this one here is RB. And uh, the potential, uh, as you get closer here, the potential increases. So, um, so this one here, the potential at R A must be greater than the potential at R B. So, uh, so here the difference between them is twelve point four seven six, and it's a positive result as expected. Another example here that we want to try is to uh, given the vector. Uh, v is given as a scalar expression x squared y z at any point x y and z in space find the electric field at the point 2 3 and 0 now we have already derived the expression that the electric field is equal to the minus the gradient of v so now we have three ways to get the electric field the first one is using superposition as we explained earlier by integrating over different type for charges or summing discrete charges and so on so you can get the electric field this is the first way the second one is through gauss theorem by selecting a proper gauss service and applying symmetry conditions you can get the electric v electric field the third one is is the one i'm showing you here is is if you are if you are able to get v and i will show you later how to get v uh, in in a general for a general charge distribution uh, and even for closed services and so on it becomes a boundary value problem uh, we we can get the electric field by taking the minus gradient of uh, of this v so as i explained earlier we start by getting the electric field minus the gradient of v differentiate relative to x with a negative sign in the x direction negative derivative relative to y with negative sign in the y direction and do the same relative to z the derivative of x squared will give you 2x the derivative of y will give you 1 the derivative of z will give you 1 if you put all this together you get this this expansion here uh, you substitute at the point uh, 2, 3, and 0. Of course, this E at any point, substitute at these points, you get Z, well, Z is equal to 0, will cancel this one out, and they will cancel this one out. You end up by, uh, by minus 4 multiplying 3, so you get minus 12 in the EZ. And, of course, the unit of the voltage is volt per meter. Okay, we should not forget about the units. Another example that I want to show you, uh, which is also very useful understanding how to get the electric field from the potential, is this one here, we try to obtain a formula for the electric field intensity um, uh, on the axis of a circular disk of radius A that carries a surface charge density rho s. So we'd like to find that electric field any, uh, on, the axis, on the axis of this disk, and this disk has a surface charge density rho s column per meter squared. Um, so let's see how we can proceed to solve this problem. As I explained earlier, it's, it's, it's a good thing to start by drawing a diagram. So this is here the disk that we have. We assume it's in the xy plane. And this is the, the axis of the disk. And we want to calculate the electric field at a point here. One way of calculating the electric field, of course, you can calculate the electric field directly. Find the contribution from each element. And then you do a vectorial sum. And then you sum all the contributions. This is a valid approach for doing that. Another approach that you can do is to find first the potential resulting from all these differential service elements. And then after you found the total potential, you find its gradient. 
and in that case you will uh, in the negative of the gradient will give you the electric field and this is what I will what I'll be doing here and I will leave you to try the other one uh, so for for this uh, for this structure I will, if I take a small service element I will treat it as a point charge and in that case the potential at, at the point at the observation point here resulting from this point charge here is equal to dq over 4 by epsilon r squared this is a service element of course from the from the problem we can tell cylindrical coordinates will be the best one to use and the service element will have uh, d rho dash here and here rho dash d phi dash here so it's rho dash d rho dash d phi dash multiplied by rho s this is the charge that we have of this point charge or this differential element r is the distance pointing from here to here this is z of the observation point so we'll keep this one as z and this one here is rho dash so this length here is equal to square root z squared plus rho dash squared and you should understand that I use the dash here to you know the source region the coordinates of the source region and this makes a big difference later when we calculate the gradient and so on so we proceed to calculate to get the summation of all the contributions we are integrating over the complete area of the disk so the rho will go from 0 up to a phi will go from 0 up to 2 pi this is the dq that we have rho s rho, rho, rho s service charge density multiplied by rho dash d rho dash d phi dash divided by 4 pi epsilon r and r square root rho dash square plus z squared here z is a constant z is a, is a coordinate of the point at which we are measuring the, the potential and of course here the potential is measured relative to infinity because we already made the assumption that the contribution from a point charge is this one so we assume that the voltage at infinity is equal to zero so there is already implied assumption here that everything is relative to the, vo to the voltage at infinity which is zero we can take rho s over, uh, over 4 by epsilon out we can integrate over d phi as well this will give us 2 by so this will cancel to give us rho s over 2 epsilon now this integral is a very simple to carry out because uh, this is uh, a bracket to the power minus 1 half multiplied by its derivative so the integral will give me the bracket to power 1 half so we into both the upper limit for, for rho you get a squared you get the low, lower limit you get square root of z squared which is z now um, I w uh, just to keep in mind here when I did this calculation I assumed always that I'm talking about the, the modulus of z why what do I mean by that um, if you if you if you, this is my plane here and this is the disk if I take z in this direction then the length r is this one here this length here is equal to r squared plus z squared but if I'm talking about a point in the other direction of the axis okay z here is negative z here is negative but uh, nevertheless what will uh, what will appear in this expression here is again is is um, is the is the modulus of z it should be the actually the modulus of z to take into account that I care only about the length of z not its sign so for z for z greater than zero this is this expression is okay for z less than zero I should include here in this one the modulus of z just to keep in mind that uh, the uh, the model the uh, I can I can draw it for you here that that z here is always positive as true so once I calculated the voltage the next step is to get the gradient and when I do the gradient I'm calcul I'm differentiating relative to the coordinates of the observation points so I will differentiate z notice here that the the potential was only a function of z so the only component that will get out of the gradient is the partial v partial z in the z direction and this is what I did here I differentiate this part relative to z so the bracket will give us uh, one half multiplied by the bracket to the bar minus one half multiplied by the term inside the bracket which is 2z and the derivative of z will give you here minus one and keep in mind that if I'm putting here minus modulus z this should be one this should become one for z less than zero okay because when I when I made the calculation I actually depended on the modulus of z not, not on z itself so now we, we differentiated v relative to z to end up with this expression and uh, of course you can put the negative sign in this will give you one uh, minus um, minus uh, this term here z z squared plus b squared to the power minus one half and for z less than zero this will be the, the, the expression notice that for z than zero the field is pointing in the negative z direction okay it's very important to understand that so this is another another factor as well